Hey everyone, my name is Pritam and you're watching Tech with Pri. Welcome to my channel and I'm back with another exciting technical video. And this is the 24th video of our newly created technical series called ServiceNow Developer. So in my last video, uh, we have started to, you know, build our uh, custom application. So that was the part one video where we have discussed a lot of things like starting from the main important thing like what is the business problem or what is the use case based on which we are going to develop the custom application. So if there is no business problem, then we don't need a custom application, right? So I have discussed about the business problem and not only that, also about the current process that the company is following, what are the challenges they are facing and what are the outcome they're looking for, right? And also we have seen the steps uh, for application development like the process flow, also like who are going to use the custom application that we are going to build. And I told you it is very, very important to determine the user of your application so that you can, you know, uh, differentiate different personas or the roles, right? And importantly, what are the benefits that going to get by the different departments with our custom application? So we have discussed about departments like, uh, you know, device management, uh, release management, uh, dispatch management group. So all those things, again, all those things in detail I have discussed in the last video. And finally, what are the input and output things, right? So each of this thing are very, very important before you build your custom application in ServiceNow. You need to have this answer from your client. Right. In the last video, I have covered each and everything of the business problem, outcome and everything, whatever I just mentioned. Right. So it is very, very important that you watch the last video before you watch this one, because if you do not clear about the business problem, if you do not know why we are doing it, then it would be very, very difficult to sync with this video. Right. This is a kind of a builder series that I'm doing. So the first video was uploaded in the last part. So this is the uh, part two. Right now here we are going to finally create our application. So in the ServiceNow studio, all right, I know you're pretty excited to do that. But again, if you missed that video, don't worry, I'm going to put the link in the description and the link will be also available here on your screen. Okay. So make sure you watch the full video because each and every steps are very, very important. Also practice at the same time in your PDI. So before I show you the ServiceNow studio and how you can create your app, Let's go to my PowerPoint and let's see three or four very important points about the ServiceNow Studio that you need to know. Then we'll jump into the studio. Okay. So ServiceNow Studio. So it provides a powerful integrated development environment, which is the IDE for application developers to work on custom application in one centralized location. So what do I mean by one centralized location? So you can have your all files like your data files, like the tables, business rules, client scripts, form configuration, each and everything in a single location. And it would be very, very easy to locate those things and work on that. So you would understand that when uh, we will start building our application inside of Studio. Okay, so you can see building custom applications. So create workflows, forms and user interfaces for various business needs. Okay, very, very important point. Uh, next, we have the source control integration. So we can integrate with external Git repositories like GitLab or GitHub for advanced version control management. Now this source control integration, I'm going to show you in the next video when we will integrate our ServiceNow custom application with the GitLab for source control. Yes, I'm going to show you each and every step how you are going to integrate that, right? So it would be also part of integration and also we are going to see how helpful and useful it is. Okay, next perform code search. Another very, very powerful thing. Okay, so you can just, uh, you know, it's a built in feature as you can see uh, that enables developer to, you know, search about load snippets, classes, functions, variables, and other elements in their application or across the multiple application. Again, you can simply search uh, of any codes part of the application and it's a very, very helpful feature. Trust me, I'm going to show you that. And there are more important points that are there. So don't worry, I'm going to put the link of this ServiceNow Studio, uh, you know, product documentation page so you get more idea about it. So like I promised, I won't take much time here. I will switch back to my PDI and we'll start building our application in ServiceNow Studio. All right. So I'm in my personal developer instance, guys. So I will quickly open the studio. So all you need to do is search for studio. And while you search for studio, you will get two studio. One is the App Engine Studio. One is the studio under system application. So app engine studio, again, it is a very powerful thing. 
I will create altogether a separate playlist for the App Engine Studio. So it's a very low code interface with very powerful features. Very, very important one. But for today, and also for the CAD examination, we have to focus on the studio application. So I'm going to simply open it in a new tab. And once you open the ServiceNow Studio application, you'd be able to see a few this, uh, this pop up. So basically we have three button here. Very important. Uh, create application. That's what we are going to do. Uh, also, we can import from source control. So I was talking about GitLab or GitHub repository directly. You can use that, right? More about it. I will talk about in the next video where I will show you that how you can connect your ServiceNow custom application with the GitLab, right? And also you can select uh, application from the store. Uh, to customize but with your PDI you won't be able to do that to customize any of the store application and also these are the you know recent applications or out of the box application which is showing right so we are going to simply click on create application now once you click on create you will get uh, you know open this pop-up window where it is asking for the app name description and other stuff now this is something is called the uh, GSC or the guided application creator. Now it will help you at the initial stage to you know all the information that you will provide based on that it will uh, you know ready your application in the studio. So it's like when you set up your new phone okay uh, you have to provide your Gmail ID and all those uh, stuff then the UI comes up and stuff like that. So it's something like that. So it's called the uh, guided application creator okay. So what I'm going to do is that I'll just make a little bit small this screen. Yeah, 90% is good. So the app name, you know what I'm going to give is the take with free. So again, you can give any other name you want. So I'm going to use this name now for description. Uh, okay, so device management and process delivery. So that's what we are going to do with the app. Okay, and I can also add a picture which I'm right now not doing, but you can add it simply. Next, if I go to the advanced settings now, very, very important thing is here. One is the scoped application or the global. So like I said, it's also recommended by ServiceNow. Whenever you are working with a custom application, you should always work in a private scope, right? Again, in my last to last video, I have explained what is the difference between global scope and the private scope. And also like what is how this namespace is coming, right? With every details. So again, if you have any confusion understanding this, so you can refer to that video. Uh, the link will be there in the description. So we are going to choose the scope application and for the name. Now this particular, this two part, I have to give the same. So if I just try to remove that, you see, you must start the prefix with X underscore this one X for the custom application. And this is the auto generating one. Again, I've already explained you this. Now here I have to, uh, give the name so it's the take with pre but it's taking the less name because it cannot be more than 18 characters so i'll just leave it as take with p maybe that's the scope name now how helpful this scope name is you would see that i'm going to click on create now it is asking me to create roles we can create roles later also so let's create some roles so we can you can also choose roles from you know uh, sys underscore user underscore roles table all those things are coming all the roles Okay, but we are going to create our new role now to determine what are the roles uh, for your new application. You need to think who are the people who are the different personas are going to use your application, right? Take with pre application again, all these things I've discussed in the last video. So we have team like device management. So for the device management group, I will create a role. So device management and you would see how helpful it is. Now you see. The role name is not just device underscore management, but is the scope name dot the role name. This role name is specifically for this application scope. That is what it is suggesting, right? And also it is differentiating from all other roles for different applications. We'll create another one for the dispatch management team this time. Dispatch management. Uh, another one for the release management uh, for the approver release management. And finally, uh, end user, right? So we don't want to give same access to all the group of the people, right? We want different access for different group of people. That's what it should be. So end user, that's it. So our four roles has been created successfully. Now, now I'll click on continue. Now here uh, we have to choose our interface. Very important again mobile or the classic. So for the time being, I'm choosing classic and later we can change it to mobile uh, if we want to develop it in future. Now, uh, very importantly, you are not able to see the option for next, right? That's because of the page size. So I'm going to just, uh, you know, make it like 80% so you can see it's visible now. So maybe that's something you need to do also. So I'm going to click on continue. 
Now, very important thing, very, very important thing. The model, the data model that we are going to configure right now. That means the table. What are the tables that we are going to need? So for the time being, I'll create one table for our device request. So all the details of of the request will store in the table. So what are the fields will be there? Uh, how it will be, how it would look like in the form view, in the list view, each and everything we will configure in the upcoming videos. Okay. But right now we are going to create the table. Again, I can choose from existing table uh, from my instance, but I'm going to click on create new table. Now, once you click on create new table, you will get three options. One is from upload spreadsheet. So it will generate a new table uh, and all the data from the spreadsheet will be there. Also, we can extend the table, right? Uh, we can extend all the fields and, you know, all the fields and reference fields also. And also we can create a table from the scratch. But as per our use case, we are going to use uh, extend. We are going to extend the table and we are going to extend the task table, right? So we are going to take a lot of features from the task table in our new table. So I'm going to click on table extend, extend the table and I'll choose the table as task table. All right. Good. And I'm going to click on continue. Now it is asking me if I want to add a new field. So these are all the default fields coming from the task table, right? As you know, after extending a table, what happens right now? I'm not adding any field again. All these things we are going to do inside of the, you know, studio application. Uh, so I will just again, I need to uh, zoom out. 67 is fine. OK, so I can see continue. So now important thing. What is the table level? What is the name of the table that I want to give? So the name of the table that I want to give that would be device request. So device request. OK, and you can see the table name is again automatic generated. First the scope name and then table name. So we can create a auto number features later. Also, we can do all these things, but let me do that. So I want to. So I want automatic features. So it would be like uh, the numbers. So like the INC, like the incident number starts with the INC. So you know all these things. So the prefix should be DR and then uh, maybe four zeros and then it should not be seven, maybe five. OK, now if I click on manage access, now this is very, very important. So guys, this is the ACL that I'm trying to configure here. So again, if you have any confusion on ACL uh, and service and the roles also, please refer to my video. I have already uploaded videos on ACL and roles in my ServiceNow system administrator playlist. If you have any confusion, I would request you go and watch that clear your confusion and then come back here for the device management role device management people in that particular table device request. I want them to create access, read access, write access and delete access because they are the one who would manage all the device and manage the request. So they need full access. Now for the dispatch team in dispatch team, they don't need to create a record in the table, right? They can read the record. They can edit the record also if sometimes if required, uh, but they cannot delete the record. Okay. Now for the release management team again, so they don't need to create the record. Uh, they don't need to edit the record or delete the record. See delete is very, very, uh, you know, crucial one, right? So you should give someone delete access, you know, very carefully. And also for the end user, uh, end user should not need any kind of access in this table because they would be the end user. So they don't need access. Okay. So this is the ACL I have already configured. So see our table is created. We have also set the auto number and our roles are done. And also we have created the ACL. How cool it is, right? So I'm going to click on continue. So now within a few seconds, our table is created with 68 fields. Now all these fields are coming from the task table because we have extended that. So I'm going to click on continue. So this is the table. So we are not going to create another table. So I'm going to click on done with tables. All right. So it's time to design your apps. So I'm going to click on start. So these are the, you know, short summary of your app that has been done. So again, I will just zoom out. So I'm going to click on create and you see done with the apps. So now I can configure different layouts and different stuff. So I'm going to directly go to studio for that. So like me just uh, 75, 80, 90. Okay. So I'm going to click on go to studio. Now you would see our app is ready. This is the tech with pre our new app. It's the version 1.0.0. I'm going to click on that. 
and you can see now you would see the power of ServiceNow Studio. So you can see based on our information what you have provided in our you know guided application creator. So we have the tables under the data model. Okay, this is a section where we have the table. So if I click on that, I would be able to see the table. You see, this is the device request table. This is the name, extending task table, and all the fields are available here coming from the task table. If I go here, we have also access control. Now the next tab is the access control. So where I have uh, four roles that I mentioned. So if you click one of the role, you can see in a new tab, it is opening. It's like opening in a new page. So now for an example, if, if I had to configure the role tab, I have to open it in a new tab and you know, stuff, do stuff like that again, need to search and do like that. But it is very, very useful. So if I want to open the another role, it would open in just another tab. Okay. How cool it is. Also, we have access control. If I open click on it, you can see access control is opening. So we don't have the security admin. That's why you can't edit. So all these modules have been created by default. So if I click on all, you can see this is the module configuration you can do. And there are so many things that we are going to explore and do in throughout this series, right? So also we have file here. We can create file. So, so we can diff, we can add different file. I would show you like service port starting from service portal, catalog and flow designer, all these things. So I hope you enjoyed the video guys. You have learned a lot of things. Let me know in the comment section if you have any doubt. And in the next video, we are going to see this thing, source control, how we can link to source control. We will create our free GitLab account and there we would manage this source control. Okay, so more about it in the next video. Again, don't forget to share this video with your friends and families so that it can reach out to many people. Also, follow me on Instagram and also subscribe my YouTube channel. Bye-bye. See you in my next video.